Welcome to the Maria Liberati Show, where food meets art, travel, and life. What does food mean to you? This week's episode, we travel to Hanoi in Vietnam and visit with chef paul b kennedy who is he specializes in vietnamese cooking he's in vietnam that's where i mentioned we're going to interview him also an entrepreneur and an author so he's going to share with us tips and just ideas and an explanation of vietnamese cuisine and then i'm going to share with you some simple ways to make substitutions in the kitchen for some really popular ingredients because you don't always have these ingredients on hand and with short notice you might need to know what to do to substitute so please stay tuned for this week's episode and also i'd like to thank everybody that attended the pizza it was actually a virtual making class with chef rocco from rocco's dough in miami florida that was our virtual pizza class and rocco's a specialist in neapolitan pizza so he's definitely that's his specialty so he shared with us tips on making the real neapolitan pizza and i'd like to thank everyone for attending we did have a lot of fun and also i'd like to thank everyone from the stratford library in stratford new jersey Jersey for attending my virtual book signing and cooking class um, this past Saturday. And I especially would like to thank the director of the library, Alfred Encarnacion, for having me at the library. So thank you. I've done many appearances at the library and I'm looking forward uh, to doing a live event there when my next book comes out. So I just wanted to give everyone thank yous for attending my uh, programs. Share uh, pictures of some of the recipes that we talk about on the Maria Liberati show. Share those hashtag the Maria Liberati show on social media send us the link and also you can share a review of the Maria Liberati show hashtag it and send it to us and you will be entered in a giveaway to win a copy of one of my books from the basic art of Italian cooking by Maria Liberati and you can find those books online you can find them really anywhere books are sold, but you can also find them at marialiberati.com and artoflivingprimamedia.com. That's the publisher's name. And of course, you can find them on Amazon and Kindle. So stay tuned. We have a lot to share this week. So when you're new to the world of cooking and baking, everything can feel a little bit complicated and it can get even more frustrating when you set out to make a recipe and then realize that you're missing an important ingredient. Luckily, there are many ingredients that you can use to replace the missing item from your latest recipe. Here are some common replacements that can help you out if you find yourself in a pinch. And I get emails all the time asking me how to substitute different ingredients, but I'm going to share with you today the three most popular ingredients that I seem to get the most emails about wanting to do a substitution for. Those three ingredients are eggs, milk, and lemon juice. You know, and basically those ingredients are in many, you know, many recipes call for those ingredients. So, so for eggs, one common ingredient that, you know, it's, it's a common ingredient that needs to be replaced in a recipe. You can't just eliminate it from the recipe. Eggs are important to many recipes because they do a variety of things. They can be used as a leavener to make a dish fluffy and light. They can add creaminess or they can even add to the structure of a dish with their strong protein. Replacing eggs depends on their intended use in a recipe. If you're looking to make 
a meringue or something similar, you can actually use the liquid from a can of garbanzo beans. It will whip up to a very similar texture. If you're baking and need an egg replacement in a recipe that already has a leavener, you can use buttermilk. The second ingredient is milk. So milk's another important ingredient that can be difficult to replace in a recipe. One lucky thing is that there are many milk substitutes readily available. From almond milk to coconut milk, you have many options to get a creamy liquid into your dish. Soy milk has many essential nutrients, like dairy milk. If you have simply run out of milk, you can use a combination of cream and water to reach a similar texture if you have cream at hand. The last and third ingredient is lemon juice. Acid is essential in many recipes and it can be used as a flavor element and also to help in the leavening process. If a recipe calls for lemon juice, you can actually use a similar amount of vinegar to get a similar effect. This is effective in cases when the lemon is only needed to be an acid and not when the lemon is the main flavor profile of the recipe. If you're trying Trying to make lemon bars, for example, vinegar will not leave you with the ideal flavor. Learning the basics of replacing ingredients can help you to become a better cook. You never know when you'll run out of an ingredient and it's nice to know how you can replace it. When you're able to easily make these substitutions, you will know you are a very accomplished cook. And today we're here with Paul Kennedy, who is, well, first of all, we're traveling to Hanoi. Um, Paul is in Vietnam and uh, it's actually 9 a.m. where I'm at on the East Coast, but it's 9 p.m. for him. He is, well, he's a chef, he's an entrepreneur, he's a book author, and he's mostly what we're going to be talking about today. He's an expert on Vietnamese cooking, although he's a talented chef graduate of Johnson and Wales, right, Paul? Johnson and Wales. Yes. Yeah, so, would... um, but anyway, Paul, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Maria. Thank you for having me. So I guess we'll start off with, are you originally from Vietnam or are you from the U.S.? I'm from the U.S. I grew up outside of D.C. in uh -huh. Virginia, Northern Virginia. Okay. Moved to Charleston. So uh -huh. I went to Johnson & Wales before they moved their campus to Charlotte. And then I went up to New York, which well, is where I was before coming here. Okay. And that it doesn't matter. The only reason I was asking that, because I was going to ask you, so how did you find yourself in Vietnam? I took a birthday trip uh -huh. that got extended uh -huh. by choice, spontaneity. Um, and I decided to just keep traveling. And when I got to Hanoi, I decided to stay. There you go. <laughs> you like it, it so it, much. It's a gorgeous place. I had my trip was not there was no intent to travel and stay. There was a possible intent to travel uh -huh. um, to extend my vacation. I did do that, but I didn't think I would not go back. Wow! And I, it's um, I'm on my fourth year, four and three and a half years. Wow! So I years. know you. Yes, and I know before we get into cooking the Vietnamese cuisine. Um, you told me that you opened up, is it a hotel or a hostel there? Well, pre-COVID, um, they're on pause now, but I, when I got to Hanoi, I first opened a hostel and then I opened a hotel and then I opened a travel agency, oh, but we wow. have no travel. Oh, we okay. have nothing going on right now. We're okay. hoping to reopen um, tourism mm -hmm. next month. Whether or not I continue with everything, I don't know. Okay. But that's what I did when I, when I got here. Okay. Um, and all right. So I guess, you know, I, I love having um, chefs that, that specialize in different cultures because I think it's so much fun to try out and expand Definitely. your cultural right. palate, right? And because um, there's so many different tastes and things like that. So tell us a little bit about, I guess a little, can you do like a quickie mini primer on Vietnamese cuisine? Vietnamese cuisine is 
few utensils or cooking vessels. So it's usually one knife, one pot. Uh huh. Very little protein. Uh huh. A lot of herbs. Uh huh. And greens. Yes. Moderate sugar. Huh. So it's and a that's healthy. That's really healthy. That's the gist of the um the cooking. Oh wow! And what? Is there an herb or, you know, I know like, for instance, in Italian cooking, basil, rosemary, oregano, or like really the popular herbs that are used. Is there any, you know, it sounds like they use lots of herbs, but if I asked you like, what's a really popular either spice or herb in Vietnamese cooking, what would that be? They use a lot of basil, prill leaves. They, um, they use a lot of bitter greens. However, what I've realized is that the herbs here are taste have a different taste than they do in the U.S. Because we have a lot of oversight, so we have consistency in the U.S. And here, it's a lot of people growing in their yards and different varieties that they don't know about. Mm -hmm. So the flavor is completely different. The herbs are fresher. Right. Um, the spices can go either direction. They can uh -huh. be weaker or stronger than what we get in the little. McCormick's jar at Wegmans <laughs> or Safeway. Yes, or yes. Food line. <laughs> yes, yes. But so big differences. Big differences. Big differences. So big differences. tell us like what, you know, I know Italian cooking, right? So I'm going to say spaghetti or, you know, lasagna <laughs> or pizza. So what is a popular, you know, like a couple popular dishes for Vietnamese cuisine? I think that Three that they're known the most for is the banh mi, which is the sandwich. Oh, they have um, a sandwich. In, in the U.S., it's completely, completely different than it is here because everything's westernized that we're used to. Uh -huh. But like you and I were talking about, it's normal for a country to customize it to their own palates. So it's normal for it to be different. Uh, pho, which is their soup, uh -huh. uh, noodle soup with either chicken, beef, et cetera. Huh? And the third one, spring rolls. Those oh, spring three rolls. So everybody, so common. tell me, do we, cause I know, you know, in America, they westernize, they, they really like, you know, it's really Italian American cooking in most restaurants. And I know Chinese stuff is kind of like Chinese American, it's right. not real Chinese. So the spring rolls, is there a difference from the spring rolls we would have in Vietnam to say the stuff they serve here in the US? Definitely, because again, the herbs are heavy on the herbs here. So in the U.S., you'll see dishes with a lot of salads on the side. Not necessarily the spring rolls, but in general, right. that's how we eat our greens. Here, they eat their greens in the dishes, in the actual course, so the in entree. This, in the spring roll, there's more A lot green, of herbs. A lot, a lot herbs. of herbs. Yeah. But you know, it's funny you mentioned the lasagna, because I tried making that here. First of all, I have spaghetti. I had spaghetti here at restaurants, and it's nothing like the spaghetti we're used to. It's so sweet. But I tried making lasagna to, again, share what, you know, some yes. of the dishes that we make in the U.S. Yes. And you can't even source the ingredients to make it correctly. Oh, you're you kidding. Know, it's just imp impossible. impossible. You, can't, you can't buy 80-20 meats. You can't buy um, lasagna noodles are the only thing that you could probably source that's similar. Uh-huh. Um, so what the, about like flour? The flour, like even zero zero flour, can you get that type of flour there? Well, you would never find something labeled like that. You would find typically flour bought, um, it would be in a large unmarked container. And your guess is as good as theirs as to what kind of flour it is. Oh, it wow. Be baking flour, it could be, it could be, what, it could be just... anything. And the same with baking. Uh -huh. they, have, they just don't know what baker sugar is or the difference between that and confectioner they just don't know wow um because they'll so need to they don't so desserts <laughs> what what is a typical dessert i guess i should have asked that then what's a typical dessert um they they have these desserts that have pork floss and egg yolks oh wow so they'll incorporate proteins <laughs> into their desserts as well uh-huh so I remember no brownies I remember, or chocolate, big chocolate cakes or anything like that. The, the cakes, they don't like as sweet. They do moderate sugar across the board. Uh -huh. Sugar in their, in their lunches and their soups and everything. 
So when it comes to dessert, they don't like it as sweet. And that's something else I've tried making for people. Yes. Yes. I tried making all these different desserts and everyone too sweet, way too sweet. Just normal buttercream frosting, right. impossible for them to eat. Wow. So it sounds like they put sugar, like you said, a moderate, just a small amount of sugar in a lot of their dishes. And, so then they don't really want the, you know, the sweet, they don't want the sweet then. And uh, so they're not really interested in the desserts which is not a no. bad thing. <laughs> and, and I'll see the um, sharing's big, family eating family style. Oh. And when they do, they might have a can of Coke, uh -huh. which surprises me because they don't like yeah. sweet things. Sweet. And then you realize, oh, they share that can of Coke amongst two or three people. Oh, so it's just so a real, it's, it's a little it's a piece of Coke. So yes. they, when they do have high sweet things, um, it's very uh, nominal amounts. It's just a little amount. Yes. Little. I wanted to ask you about the sandwich because I, I know you said like in America, you know, we Americanize the sandwiches. So just tell me the sandwich, that first one you mentioned, it began with the banh mi. What the was banh that? The banh mi. Banh mi. Oh, banh mi. Uh -huh. And what kind of bread do they use? Well, that's the, that's the key part to it. So banh mi just means bread. Oh. In the U.S., the banh mi is always pickled vegetables with some sort of pork meat. Um, and it, they'll usually have sriracha and I think maybe mayonnaise or something. Um, right. We don't use, rarely use sriracha. Mayonnaise, not for that. Uh -huh. It just means the bread. So if you go get banh mi, it can be right. a fried egg, egg on it. It can be pate. It can be anything. There is no standard. Uh -huh. But in and the U.S., if you say banh mi, you're getting the one with the pork and the pickled vegetables. Uh, That's just the yes. one that you get everywhere that you rarely see here. They are. Rarely. But what kind of bread do they have? Is it the crusty it's, bread? or like It's the French soft? bread. It's French okay. bread. Don't forget we were occupied. I say we. Oh, yes. I'm in, by I'm in France. Hanoi. Yes. So we were, we were, we, they were occupied by the French. So Everything is heavily influenced by the French. The soup, the pho, is uh -huh. from them. The French bread, the pate. Uh -huh. All the dishes have some sort of extremely heavy influence from, from them. The so the only thing banh mi is, the trick to the banh mi is it has to be a crispy outer crust with the, with the baguette. I so see. And then extremely soft in the center. Uh -huh. So that's what makes the banh mi. Everything else that you throw it out the window. It's just, it has to be the bread for it to be banh mi. It has and, to be you, correct. and it doesn't really matter then. It sounds like what's inside. It can be it really anything inside. Yes. In the morning, in the morning, you'll have the fried egg, maybe fried egg with pate. In the afternoon, huh? you might have meatballs. Uh -huh. um, in the evening, you might have pork barbecue, uh -huh. uh, anything, anything. But so it just it, has to do with the bread. It has to Only do with bread. the bread. Only so bread. is there, I think you said they are kind of lighter though on meat. It's mostly herbs and vegetables. Is that right? Or is it a heavy, is it heavily <sighs> eating meat? Very light with the meat. The only time it's heavy is if it's a processed meat. I see. So they make these meat cakes mm -hmm. and it would be similar to if I said, can you thick cut that bologna for me? Huh? Because it's a, it's a really thick, oh my gosh. heavy kind of processed meat. That's the only time it's really heavy on the meat. Heavy and on then meat. they watch your, their portions. Exactly. So if you could tell us, I was trying to, and it's, you know what? I'm guessing because they were occupied by the French and French is cooking is typically complicated where Italian cooking, you can say it's, it could be pretty simplistic. So I know you told me Vietnamese cooking can be a little complicated, right? Right. So it's complicated. What, it's time consuming. Time consuming. So what I was going to ask, is there any Dish. Now, some of that stuff you mentioned, yes, it's gotten popular in the U.S., but, you know, there are U.S. versions of what, you know, the Vietnamese cooking is. But it's normal. Yes. Is there any way you could recommend for somebody, like if they wanted to try out some flavors at their home, you know, what should, what could they do? Is there anything they could do that's kind of simple or? Well, this, that's the tricky part. And what really got me into how to 
how to tie together their culture with the food yes. was the underlying flavor of, say, pho, the soup, yes. uh, is cinnamon. Yes. So here you don't, you only cook with local ingredients. It's farm right. to table a Definitely. thousand times. Right. You, so the pho you have in every village will be different because uh -huh. they only cook with their ingredients. So it's sweeter in the South. It's, it's not as sweet in the North. Herbs mm -hmm. are different on the side. It's not on the side, but the cinnamon, uh -huh. the cinnamon is a prevailing flavor. You go, wow, that's really unique. Oh yes, that is unique. So the, the, the tough part with picking a specific flavor that is Vietnamese is understanding cinnamon and how it's going to taste different depending on where you buy it yes. and where that cinnamon came from. Mm -hmm. That's the difficult, that's a really difficult part because mm -hmm. even for me, you know, cinnamon is going to be completely different. I know in the U S what, when it, once you find it, uh -huh. it'll be consistent. Yes. So it's the opposite. So uh -huh. the, the trick is it's kind of like nutmeg in the U S when you cook uh -huh. with nutmeg, you just want it to be able to taste it. You want to right. know it's there, but not to be the predominant flavor of nutmeg. It's yeah. the same with cinnamon here. Uh -huh. You want that hint, you want to be able to identify it, but uh -huh. you want it to take you a second to identify it. Wow. You want to be able to go, I taste it, I taste something. What is that? Nutmeg. Yes. Got it. So that's the same way they use cinnamon here. Uh -huh. That's the same way. That's the same way. And I think in the U.S., you know, we're either, well, either the ingredient, a lot of the ingredients that they sell at the supermarkets are so kind <laughs> of watered down. So we have to use a lot of something. There's a lot of cellulose and different things and, yes. you know, or we're just spoiled that we, it's so prevalent. So we tend to use a lot of everything. But when you're using fresher ingredients, I always say this, and, and real authentic, you only need a little bit so that, you know, that could be the reason also. So I know you have a book coming out. When is it supposed to be out? Do you know yet? Don't have the exact date. We're hoping the end of this year. Okay. And I know with everything going on, I have a book coming out too, and things are always getting pushed back. Nice. And all kinds of, uh, so, but okay. So we can look for your book and is that going to marry sort of the culture with the recipes also tell us a little bit about the culture or just mainly the recipes. It is. I'm trying to make it a book that you, um, uh, that you can flip through uh, oh, a coffee great. table book. Yes. So it has recipes, uh -huh. authentic uh, Vietnamese recipes, yes. but it also has a little bit of tidbits about Vietnam. That's because great. we really don't know. Most people in America don't know outside of Vietnam War, they don't know much about it. And they exactly. think you need a machete to get to your hotel. <gasps> because you think, but it's just, you know, Hanoi is a city. It's, it's almost city. as big as New York. Uh-huh. It has mid-rises versus high rises, but there's still about nine million people here. Oh wow. So it's still a city. Um, but it's different. And understanding the culture once you understand the culture you understand the people and it's the same with the food learning through the food i think you agree I, with that. I always think it's so important i love it that you're going to have tidbits because it's really important many of these cultures you know have a, their culture is so tied to the food and that's what also makes it so interesting and and it's just really an experience because you're actually experiencing culture. So I think that's a really, really important part also. So I want to ask you this question. I usually ask this to my guests. I forgot to tell you. Uh -oh. Sorry about it. Uh -oh, this is <laughs> difficult. Here's the difficult part. No, I just always ask because you're a chef. So food must yes. mean something to you. What does food mean to you? Food means something I can, this I can say, it means something yes. completely different now that I have lived in Hanoi. Uh -huh. Completely different. Yeah. It's not a pleasant story, but I've got to tell you, I saw, I hope this is okay. Yes. <laughs> it's not gory. Uh, okay. So I saw a fatal accident um, recently. So it's a sad story uh, uh -huh. here in Vietnam with, uh, you know, everyone pretty much rides motorbikes. Okay. But I, I, I saw they had a couple of kilos of rice in the back and the rice spilt. Uh huh. And in the U.S., I would be thinking of the, the body, you know, mm -hmm. or the accident, the tragedy. Right. And my mind went straight to the rice spilled all over the street because I understand the importance 
of the food here. Yes, completely yes. different. I, it took me a minute going, why? What, what just happened? Why did? Mm -hmm. Why am I? And I was just staring at the bag of rice and the rice all over the, the street. Uh -huh. And I just all I could think of was that family is not getting rice. Exactly. Family's not getting rice. Yes. Uh, but but it dawned on me the how much I realized the importance of, of food and ingredients, you know, without even understanding previously why. But watching someone eat every grain of rice, I understand the value, the importance, yes. the hard work it takes to grow it. Yes, um, yes. It's got and a I, true value besides money. Yes. And I think that's so important. And sometimes in the U.S., because we're so spoiled, I learned that, too, by living overseas, that they appreciate, you know, their oh, food. So. And, you know, at one point in Italy, they used to actually kiss the bread because it was so hard to come by, you know, and people don't. Right. Thank goodness we never had to experience that here. I mean, I'm hoping, you know, people don't. Obviously, some people have, you know, most cultures really respect food. So I thank you. That's a beautiful answer. Thank you. That's great. So, Paul, mm -hmm. I know you have a website, too, where people can find recipes, right? Can they find yes. recipes? Or oh, great. Yes. PaulBKennedy.com. I'm sorry. Say Paul that B again. Paul B. Kennedy. B is my middle initial. B like yes. boy. Paulbkennedy.com. <laughs> That's great. All right. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, hopefully we'll get to have you come back when your book is out and you can share some more with us. Sounds great. Thanks so much for having me, Maria. I thanks, it. thanks for being here. Thank great you. Great talking to you. You too. Thanks for listening to the Maria Liberati Show. This is Maria Liberati. I'd like to also thank my producer, Britton Roselle, and this week's special guest, Paul B. Kennedy, chef, entrepreneur, and author. And you can find me at marialiberati.com, on Twitter at Maria Liberati, on Facebook at Chef Maria Liberati, on Instagram at Maria Liberati. You can also find me on Roku at the Basic Art of Italian Cooking by Maria Liberati channel. And let's see, you can find me on YouTube, also the Maria Liberati channel. And you can also find me on Zeno Radio, the Basic Art of radio station. You can find all of my books from the Basic Art of Italian Cooking book series and the Basic Art of series online, anywhere books are sold online, but also at marialiberati.com and at artoflivingprimamedia.com. And oh yes, I just want to tell everybody that I will be doing an Italian Easter bread bake along. We did one last year and we just had so much fun. So that will be on April 8th and it will be a virtual event and you can really join in from anywhere you are in the world. Uh, we'll be doing it at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So look out for the announcement and you'll be able to register. Registration will be limited again. And this will be on eventbrite.com. Also, we'll be advertising registration on marialiberati.com or you can sign up for my newsletter and you'll get a notification when registration has opened. And that's it for this week. Until next week, peace, love, and pasta.